Um, all right, so we got performance, uh, we have a warning on durability, and of course, you need backups. If you have a database, you absolutely need backups, and CNPG gives us backups. It's actually extremely powerful in that way. Uh, so this is the kind of YAML that we need for a real production database. Uh, so you can see it's like way more complicated, right? Um, but just to be clear, that's the entire YAML. You can see I've put dot 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 here, but it's just to the, you know, what ends here starts there. Um, and well, let's, uh, Let's deploy that. So uh, I'm going to do, uh, I think the command is uh, uh, nvsubst uh, cluster maximal cup cuttle uh, apply dash f dash. Da -da -da -da. All right. So what's going on here is that um, in cluster maximal, um, I'm creating a secret where I put my, uh, not exactly S3 credentials, but the credentials of Linode's object store. Uh, then I say, okay, give me a cluster with this and that and blah, blah, blah. Um, and I indicate I want to have uh, backups to that S3 thing. And when we say backups, uh, when you operate uh, Postgres, you actually have multiple kinds of backups. You have, you know, the classic backups like, hey, make a backup of my database now. Uh, but you also do uh, log shipping. Um, Postgres use something called the WAL, the W-A-L, the write ahead log. So every transaction gets written to that log. And what you typically want to do is store that on something like S3. And you can use that to do point in time recovery. Let's see if I can pull off that last demo. Um, so first I need to do some, uh, okay, cluster is healthy, that's great. So I'm going to do benchmark cluster maximal uh, size of 100, 10 clients, go. All right. Um, so I'm, I'm just, you know, like stuffing data in my database as one does. Okay. Uh, okay. Now it's running the backup and, you know, to save some time, I'm actually going to cancel that one. Uh, I'm going to take a backup, cnpg backup max maximal dash dash uh, backup name uh, hello all right so that created a backup so now I can do so now the backup is running so and th this is all relying on a tool called uh, barman cloud and Again, if you if you never work with Postgres before, you can be like Barman Cloud, like what is that? But if you have run Postgres, especially in replicated environments and whatever, then you probably have heard about Barman Cloud, uh, and because it's the tool used to ship the logs and so on. Uh, excellent question. Can we use Minio for the backups? Absolutely, yes. Uh, in in that case, I wanted to keep things simple. I mean, not more complicated. Uh, so I, I'm using. Um, Linode's uh, object store, uh, but I could absolutely uh, host my own uh, Minayo. Uh, another excellent remark, yes, ZFS is going to use uh, quite a lot of RAM if you let it. Uh, there is something called the ARC arc, which stands for I don't remember. I don't remember cache, um, and so it's a it's it's a caching layer in ZFS, and especially when running Postgres, there is some tuning to be done here to decide basically how much caching you want uh, Postgres to do versus how much caching you want ZFS to do. And just to give you some interesting tidbits while the backup is running, um, something interesting. Uh, with um, uh, with that arc uh, is that it can be compressed. 
So, um, you know, like the, 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 the cache of things that have been read from disk, this can be compressed in memory. So it's a trade-off, save memory, but use more CPU when you access it. And of course you can tune all these things to say, well, no, look, I, uh, my CPU is really weak on, the, on these machines, or my CPUs are really busy, but I have tons of RAM, so don't compress that cache. Uh, you can absolutely do that. Okay, and that is taking way longer than I wanted, so that kind of annoys me. Okay, fine. Uh, in that case, I might... Uh, let's see. So I think there is a... Oh, wait. Uh, hmm. I'm a little bit confused because I thought uh, that... No, starting back up. Okay, uh, so it still hasn't... Comp Ooh, uh, I'm a little bit worried because I see destination path like this. Uh, edit cluster max maximal. Oh, okay, so no, okay, my, completely my bad. I messed up with my environment variable substitution. So I'm not going able to do that demo. Uh, you see here, destination path and endpoint URL. Uh, my script was supposed to put the correct values here and I messed up, so that's not gonna work. So in going to delete that backup hello, and instead I'm gonna go for a different kind of uh, backup. Uh, uh, so I'm going to use dash dash method uh, volume snapshot and uh, all right and mm, do I have a da, da, da. Did I put the snapshot? Yeah, volume snapshot class name ZFS, so that's good. Uh, all right, I guess I probably annoyed the demo gods at some point because that one doesn't seem to work either. Really sorry. Okay, why could it be failing here? Uh, do I have. Okay, so no, I, like I okay, I don't have my bucket name and history endpoint, so that's why this part doesn't work. But the snapshot part though should still work. Uh, let's look at the status. Um, the status is telling me okay, while archiving failing, so that's normal. Um, so the question is, can I actually recover from this by loading the environment variable? Uh, so these ones, and then and subst uh, cluster maximal key apply dash f dash. Okay, and now let's see if this is going to fix. Uh, working while archiving is still failing. Um, <clears throat> so basically, um, what I wanted to show here, you know, if I hadn't um, messed up the provisioning of my cluster. All right, yeah, okay, it's, it's recovering, cool. Uh, that's pretty nice. Uh, so what's, what's happening? So I was explaining um, Postgres is writing transactions to that WAL, the writer head log, um, and then you can ship that log to S3 or a compatible object store. And I mean, it also works with other object stores, not like, not just S3 and S3 compatible ones. Um, and uh, then you can recover from that. So now it's, okay, I think it was like 220 something and now this is like 187. So it's now pushing all these logs there. So that's pretty cool. Now, what about my snapshot backup? Okay, that one failed while, why, sorry. Uh, not a lot of details here, uh, but let's try again. Um, so delete back, actually I don't, uh, 
I'm going to create it bye-bye. Uh, uh, no, sorry. Ah, uh, CNPG backup. Da -da -da. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, so this backup has started and it has completed in like eight seconds. Cool. Um, and so now what I can do is create a new cluster using that snapshot. Uh, so cluster restore. I'm going to say bootstrap recovery name. Uh, what did I put? Bye bye, something like that. Um, and uh, okay. And normally that should be really, really fast. <clears throat> okay, uh, actually I could do a watch kubectl get cluster pods. Okay, that's it. In what, 14 seconds, uh, the, the restore is up. Now let's see that there is actually data in there. Uh, so I'm going to do uh, kcnpg psql restore store and now select count star from pg bench history uh, so i get 274000 transactions and uh, that should match uh, whatever we had pages and pages and pages above uh, like when that, like that thing here and of course i did control c like an idiot so we don't know exactly uh, how many lines were inserted here. Uh, okay, well, I do apologize for the little bit like messy aspect of, the, of that last demo, but there were two things I wanted to show you. The first one is point in time recovery. So wh what I was supposed to do is put a bunch of data in the database, uh, then uh, look at the, at, at the timestamp, and then wipe the data, put some other data, and then you do a point in time recovery um, by basically here putting a recovery target. You say, I want to recover the database at that exact timestamp. And it's going to start from the previous backup and then it's going to play that wall, that write ahead log I was telling you about until that timestamp. So that's extremely cool because if you're like, well, at you know, um, 7 p.m. and three minutes, I dropped the production table, uh, then you can be like, okay, just restore the database to whatever it was at seven hour, like 7 p.m. and two minutes, you know, like one minute before I did the, the fateful drop table and that will, that will do it. Uh, and then the other demo, the one I just did, is the one on snapshots, where this is relying on ZFS snapshots to create a copy of the database like really fast and of course here I, I didn't have the time to put like tons and tons of data in the database but we did that for ephemera search with the 150 gigs database and honestly at first I thought it didn't work because in 10 seconds uh, the backup was complete and in like 20, 30 seconds, the copy was up and I was like, no, you're kidding me. There is no way that it took 30 seconds to create a full working copy of the database. But yeah, no, that's thanks to snapshots. That's what it did. Uh, so that's extremely cool. All right, so snapshots. <clears throat> so to wrap up, uh, are we happy about it? Yes, uh, we've been using that in production since May now, something like that. And if we look at disk usage, I, I checked like just before the presentation, um, for our data, like for our 1.7 million postcards, um, the database uh, is like 150 gigs, but it only uses 70 gigs on disk. So, you know, it's, uh, it's not bad. It's kind of giving us twice more storage for the same price, so that's good. Um, of course, there would be like many, many more things to talk about and to show you. Well, first I ran out of time uh, and I botched the last few demos, uh, but we could do some tuning and see the impact of various parameters, not just ZFS tuning, but Postgres tuning as well. 
uh, we could see how to migrate volumes because of course here the volumes are local they are on on the nodes on the instances so if you lose a node you lose the data that's on the node so here um, if you only lose one node you're fine uh, you, it will immediately fail over, it's great. Now, what happens if I lose two nodes uh, with my primary and my replica, then I will need to recover from backups, obviously. Uh, and if I want to move volume around, that's where I could show you the ZFS send, ZFS receive. Uh, that stuff is extremely cool.